Hi everyone and welcome. Today we'll be doing a run through of AccuFace, which is the new video based face motion capture plugin for iClone. I'll be sharing my experiences while learning the plugin and of course sharing the results along the way. And with that, let's get to it. Like I mentioned earlier, AccuFace is video based, meaning that pretty much any device that can provide live or recorded video can be used. It's worth noting that since the plugin uses NVIDIA's RTX technology, you will need to have an NVIDIA RTX based graphics card in your system in order to use it. To get started, once you open up iClone, you're going to go up to Plugins, Motion Live, and finally the Motion Live tab. Here you can see the various modules installed on this system, with AccuFace being the first listed here and the one we'll focus on. The analysis part of AccuFace is actually a standalone application that pipes the tracking information into iClone. So I'm going to launch that now and we'll take a quick look at what pops up. First off, you can see it defaults to the camera tab where you select a device to capture live video footage from. Any webcam or PC connected camera can work as long as it can hit a resolution of 1280 by 720 and maintain 30 frames per second of video. Both the live or pre-recorded video file approaches have their benefits, which we'll discuss as we move along. But here we'll start off with the live capture first. Here you can see I'm using a Logitech Streamcam, a nice but by no means ultra tier camera. And since it's not a camera attached to a helmet I'm wearing, I'll set the mode to static camera. Here's the trim results of an early recording I did, inspired by catching a glimpse of myself on the still running webcam while obnoxiously chewing on some red vine licorice sticks. Hey! Here's it on down. I'm just, uh, I'm eating a red vine. It's so good. I love these things. They're one of my favorite treats to have. Definitely try one, they're tasty. This definitely displays the usefulness and quickness in which your performance can be captured. The resolution of the video for that capture was 1280 by 720, so obviously that works well. This is all assuming, of course, that we take the time to set up the other aspects of the capture, like framing and lighting, in an ideal fashion. Here you can see I'm using a low-cost LED light off of Amazon to even out the lighting on the footage a bit. Or if you wanted an all-in-one solution, you could always go for something like a Razer Kia webcam, which has a ring light built into the unit itself. Reillusion has resources going over these, by the way, and it's definitely worth reviewing and having on hand. We're going to take a look at both some realistic and stylized character scenarios in this video, so I'll try and make sure to mention what packs those models are from. So far you've seen Natasha from the Scan Reality Pro series, and you'll see Trey from that same collection in just a minute here. From here we'll do a few calibration poses, which aren't required, but do help tailor the analysis to the actor. I can't really think of any reason why you wouldn't want to calibrate all four, as they really don't take a whole lot of time. I'll set them all here, pressing the Set Expression button once I'm ready. As a last step, since the camera isn't going to be moving with my face as I'm acting here, I'm going to check the Limit Tracking Angle box, which helps the tracking not get too funky when the face's angle from camera crosses over the set threshold. Alright, we're pretty much set up here, so for now let's jump back into iClone. Since in this case we want to use AccuFace, I'll check the box for that, and then assign a character to it. Alright, let's go ahead and preview the capture. As you can see, for general expressiveness and non-verbal acting, even from this less than ideal camera angle and lighting, this is working quite well. It can work fine for dialogue too, but there is some extra functionality in iClone that will allow us to further enhance dialogue capture. The literal one-click step for more accurate lip movement is to check the box for the Audio for Vising Track option. Under the hood, this combines the raw AccuFace motion capture with the AccuLips feature, which takes the recorded audio, analyzes and turns it into a text-based script, and then breaks each word down into individual mouth shapes and assigns them in the correct spots of the dialogue. And yes, this is all done without us having to do a single thing, and the end result of this is there will be more defined lip movements for spoken dialogue. The other big side benefit of using this is that AccuLips also adds in tongue movements for the dialogue. Hey! Here's it on down. I'm just, uh, I'm eating a red vine. It's so good. By the way, it's worth mentioning that the AccuFace plugin can utilize time code while recording, meaning that as long as you check the box, even if your PC hardware can't keep up in the real-time preview, it's still going to sync everything on a frame-by-frame -frame basis in the timeline after recording is completed. This is pretty important since in some other face capture solutions I've tried over the years, the software absolutely needed to keep pace in order for those frames to be recorded, and any dip in the frame rate would cause those frames to be permanently lost as well. I myself like to have a decent frame rate when previewing though, so I'm going to drop the quality to quick, though medium might work well too. And this is just during capture, I'll up the quality again when viewing the results. And I did forget to mention earlier that the IP address for AccuFace and MotionLive does need to match. Once you set it up once, you probably won't need to again, but just make sure those numbers are the same. I'll go ahead and click record. 
Dude, check it. Word, bro. I mean, <laughs> you don't even shred just like a little bit. I mean, you shred a lot. And after I'm done, I'll press spacebar to end recording. Right away, you'll see that the software went about that Acculips Visium step for us, which is to process the audio and assign mouth and tongue shapes to the words it detects. The next step we can take here is to review that script and correct it wherever needed. We'll have to expose the Visium and Expressions tracks in order to make some adjustments, so I'll do that here, and then double click on the script to open it up. Once it's open, I'm going to click on Align first, which will try and line up the audio with the words so that we can preview specific sections. And now if I double click on a word or a selection of words, I can play back that synced result. Dude, check it. Dude, check it. Words not in the dictionary will be read, though check the rest of them as well, since if you're like me, I tend to slur some of my words at times, and so the auto script might have gotten things a bit wrong in those spots. Once we apply the results, we'll check our animation and likely see another step of refinement. Dude, check it. Word, bro. I mean, <laughs> you don't even shred just like a little bit. I mean, you shred a lot. At its most basic, this is really all you need to do to get quality results from AccuFace from a live video stream. Here's a couple other examples applied to the neighborhood pack, specifically Francis and Earl here. And while especially Francis on the right there would need a little bit of cleanup on the lip animation to make it really production ready, you can see how much work the plugin has done for us already. What? How can you say that? I have a bad attitude when you have a far worse attitude than I do, Mom. Oh, oh, mercy. Look at all the gold. I, I am so rich. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna buy the bar. I'm not just gonna buy the bar. I'm gonna make someone else work it so I can just sit there and drink all day every day as a VIP. <laughs> we'll go over how to use pre-recorded video as well, one of my favorite features of the plugin, and also even talk about head-mounted camera solutions. But before getting into that, it's worth discussing how we can filter the motion capture data first, since these steps will be basically the same regardless of the type of footage, whether live or pre-recorded, that we'll be feeding to it. For instance, sometimes you'll find that moving one part of your face oddly ends up affecting other parts of the capture that aren't supposed to move. In the AccuFace standalone application, we have some checkboxes under Reduce Tracking Interference to specifically help with this. And ideally, you only want to check the boxes that your capture setup is showing actual issues with, as it does filter the raw data a bit. Though even if all of them need to be checked, there's still plenty of performance that's going to come through. Back in iClone, under the Motion Live interface, we have a few different tabs that help us along as well. The Strength tab, as you might guess, adjusts how strong the morph targets are activated by the AccuFace data. So if you have a stylized character that you want certain movements to be more exaggerated, you might increase these values here. Or if you're seeking a more subdued performance, you can decrease them. As you'll likely hear me repeat a few times, a little can go a long way, and shooting right up to the maximum or minimum values are probably going to give some really wonky results. The Denoise tab can be extremely useful if you're getting some high frequency jitter in the motion capture, which can be due to the video noise in the camera footage or the tracking itself as it's attempting to follow the video features. The Smooth tab is like the one you'll want to use the least, if at all, as it'll flatten out the acting pretty quickly. But obviously they're here for a reason and certainly will be helpful in certain circumstances, so definitely don't disregard them completely. Let's talk about pre-recorded footage and the minor differences in processing that. Here I'm going to be using Awen, I think it's pronounced, from the Urban Tribe pack. And a little bit earlier I think you saw Thabo or Thabo as well. The setup isn't much different here aside from popping on over to the video tab. We'll open our video file and the difference is now that we can scrub and play back in a perfectly repeated way. Find frames for calibration, tweak settings in preview mode without having to hold a pose as an actor, and then record will start playback at the current video frame. And here we go. This is pre-recorded video, and it's working just fine. For another case study in benefits, let's talk about the head or helmet mounted cameras and the flexibility this allows us with AccuFace. I've used the LiveFace iPhone plugin for a decent while and love it, but one thing worth noting is that even something as relatively light as a phone, when strapped and suspended to your head, can start to feel heavy and limiting pretty quickly, especially if the acting includes a decent amount of head movement. Here you can see how the weight and inertia of the phone causes the screen capture footage to shake, and you can likely imagine that doesn't feel great for the person either. That did a pretty darn good job of smoothing things out, but it definitely does show up in the animation and spots as well. And while this is a somewhat extreme example of movement, we do tend to move our neck quite a bit in regular conversation, and being weighted down might limit that natural movement more than we think. 
With this being the case, AccuFace allows us to use ultra lightweight cameras like a GoPro and use whatever ends up being the best option for the video acquisition. The light concept on this head cam here comes from a YouTube creator who will link below as it's a pretty fascinating idea and works well for this setup in minimizing shadows. Here's the raw video I recorded, starting with the initial poses for calibration and then acting as usual. Once the footage has been loaded onto your PC, click on over to the video tab in AccuFace. And the only difference we're going to do here is switch the tracking mode to head cam. This grays out the tracking angle box since the angle to our face is always going to be straight on with the helmet. And from here, the process is the exact same as with any other video file but now with the face performance nicely centered for easier tracking. The results will look slightly odd using a helmet cam since the acting doesn't have any neck movement associated with the rest of the acting, but when combined with body motion capture, the results do blend together quite nicely. And so you can see here that with the background changing, while my head is moving, the camera is not changing position. So at this point, I think we've covered most of what I was hoping to here in this video. We've talked about live video capture, file-based capture, and even ventured into the head cam arena. And importantly, we've also talked about best practices and about some adjustments that might help filter and enhance the results. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope this video is useful to you in your creative journey and endeavors.